Not too long ago here on the channel, we went through and built out the 40K introductory set, which comes with nearly everything we need for a 40K Space Marine combat patrol, except it doesn't have a librarian in Terminator armor. Now, this model is relatively convenient and easy to get due to it coming out in a lot of things like Leviathan when the box and the edition launched. So what I'm going to do is give mine a little bit of a conversion to make it my own and also bring you along on how I did that so that you can see some tips and tricks to make some nice simple conversions that change the look of your characters. To do this, I'm going to need a librarian. So I jumped into one of my Leviathan sets, pulled out an unbuilt librarian and went from there. And the other thing we're going to need is one of my favorite kits for converting Space Marines, and that is the Grey Knight boxes. Ideally, I'm going to be using the Combat Patrol, which has a vast amount of different pieces and everything we need for some nice juicy conversions. Starting off this project, we can build the Librarian as per the instructions. However, we are going to want to stop just prior to adding the hands onto the model, as the hands are the bit that we are going to be changing for an easy conversion. Firstly, for the right hand, the hand is sculpted onto the wrist, so we're going to have to carefully remove it. So we just get a craft knife and slowly and carefully cut away at the hand and remove it from the wrist. But once we've got the wrist away, we can then go in and file smooth the attachment point to make sure that it is nice and flush. With that done, we can glue this part back into place, which means that we have an entirely built librarian just without any hands. Conveniently, a lot of the Grey Knight kits are still built in the old style of Space Marines and GW kits and sprues, which means that we have a fair amount of pieces that are just hands, wrists, and weapons. So for a conversion like this, where we're going in and doing a weapon swap, they are incredibly convenient for Space Marines. Personally, on this one, I wanted to increase the length of my shaft. Personally, on this one, I wanted to increase the presence of the weapon. So I went for a larger hilted axe style blade, mainly the long shafted nemesis blades from the kit. We can go diving through the kit looking for a suitable weapon. Starting with the left hand, I find this really nice option of a hand holding a demon's head. So we can take a little bit of glue, stick that in place and leave it to dry. This will be brilliant for adding a little bit of extra color later on on the model. Then we can move on to tackle the right hand. And here we're going to be using a long shafted nemesis weapon, which is conveniently held with only one hand. So this is just a simple process of gluing this hand in place of the original and leaving it to dry. Now at this stage, the model is nice and I quite like the presence and style, but if we look at that blade, we do see that it is distinctly a nemesis blade. So what I thought would be good is to rebuild the presence of the librarian aspect by putting the ax head from the original kit back onto this one. And the reason we waited till this point to do that is because that way we can ensure that we've got the right planes and angles and that when we put the axe head on, we can be sure of the positioning of the overall model. Once the hands are securely glued in place, we can then actually do the surgery on the axe head. And for this, we're going to want to do a minor amount of head swapping just by snipping off the head of the axe and then going in along the shaft of the blade and cutting the blade off of the nemesis weapon. Then using some glue to stick the axe head in place, I would suggest using plastic glue for the extra security here. We're going to put the axe head in the direction we want and secure it in place with that glue. Once this is done and it is in place on the model, in order to give it a little bit of extra security, we're gonna finish it off by adding a purity seal over the joining section. This will help hide that join as well as add a little bit of extra strength there. With that hack job done, we may need to just go in and Fill in any gaps with something like Milliput, green stuff or modeling paste, as well as double check that we've removed any mold lines with either a file or a knife. But once we've done that, the model is ready for painting. And given the fact that this is a character, I wanted to paint it to a nice, slightly higher than tabletop standard, while also making sure that it was painted in a relatively time efficient manner. One, so that it's realistic for everyone to be able to do a similar sort of job. And two, so that it's available for this video. So in order to do that, we are going to want to start off by giving it a nice undercoat of red. Once we have a dried undercoat, we can grab a paintbrush and a very dark blue and proceed to do a light overbrush or a very heavy dry brush across all of the model's armor. The intention here is to shift the model to a purplish reddish tone, giving us the start of a nice transition. This can then be followed up by layering in some dark blue, where we want to make sure we pick out all of the larger flat panels leaving the purpley reddish shades in the recesses. This can then be followed up with a round of highlights, 
using a medium blue. This will be used to pick out all of the main edges and the most raised areas on the model. We are able to be slightly messy here. However, we do want to try and ensure that we get a relatively okay last round of highlights if we want to be in the best stead going forward. However, if it is a little bit messy, don't worry, we will be able to fix that with future steps. Once we've done that highlighting, you may be looking at the model and going, this looks ridiculous. It's got blue on the tops and then it's got very stark reds in the recesses. This looks awful. But don't worry, trust the process because we're going to be fixing that up in the next couple of steps. And those next steps start with the application of a thinned blue glaze wash. Ideally, this is going to be slightly thinner than a normal wash or contrast but we want to make sure that we cover all of the armor with this wash. Waiting for it to dry completely and then going in and applying a second coat. This will start to move all of those bright stark reds towards a nice deep dark rich purple, as well as set the stage for our next couple of steps, which will be taking the medium blue from earlier and going around and reapplying this to all of the edges as a final round of edge highlights. Finally, we can apply one more layer of blue glaze to tie all of these past steps together, leaving us with a lovely transition from a deep dark purple up to our brighter blue highlights. And naturally, if you want, you can push these a little bit more with some additional lighter blue highlights if so desired. Now that is essentially the armor done, apart from all of those various insignias and engravings all across the armor. But we're gonna be dealing with that in a very nice simple trick later on, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, we're gonna go look at some of the other smaller details across the model. For some of those other details, we will need to block it in with some black. This is going to be any area that we want metallic, as well as any area that we just essentially want black. So I'm thinking of things like the suit joints, leathers, and details like that. For all of the black elements, we want to follow up this black base coat with a simple highlight of a desaturated blue, catching the various areas, all of the sides, edges, and on this guy's school book, for example, we can catch and do in some textured lines just to give a rough highlight surface. Once we've got all the highlights down where we want them and they're completely dry, we can then do a quick black wash over all of these details, which will darken them down, bring them together, and we can move on while it dries. A lot of the smaller areas got my normal array of techniques to get them painted. I looked at the purity seals here and generally I quite like the sort of parchment papyrus colored paper instead of bright white purity seals. And I think the red will pop well against the blue armor. So in order to start on the purity seals, we're gonna be giving them one simple base coat all in one color. That is because both of these areas are going to be getting the same base coat in reddish brown. Before we go around and do the reds, which is the waxes, and we're going to do this with a really simple red highlight on all of the wax areas. Before we go around, take a bottle of warm flesh tone and start to highlight the parchment using some scratchy highlights. Then once we've put that down, we can slap a brown wash across all of the areas, letting it dry and making sure to mop up any heavy pooling. For some reason, my Earthshade wash came out really glossy, so we needed to apply a layer of matte varnish to sort that out. Now you might not have the same issue with a very glossy wash for some reason, or equally you might use matte varnishes throughout your paint job, and either of those work perfectly fine. However, if you are going to be doing regular varnishes on your models, I would suggest with this one, not doing any more matte varnishes after our next steps. And that's just because we're going to be working on the metallics. And at that point, we don't really want to be getting matte varnishes anywhere near our shiny metallic. But before we tackle the metallics, we do want to paint the demon head that the Space Marine is now holding. And to start off, we're going to apply a deep orange and we want to work around and base coat all of the skin, all of the blood, everything that is the demon aspect. Then we can go around and give this a quick red wash to add some shading and also deepen the areas and all of the sculpted details before we've come in with some final bright red highlights using the same red as we used for our wax seals earlier. We can then highlight all of the head as well as some of the blood areas on the model. By using these colors, we are able to help the consistency across the model. We're not gonna have any jarring differences because we're using different reds on the head and the red that is present on the wax seal is also present in the head. So there's a nice harmony across the entire model. That does mean that we can move on to some other areas. We're gonna be tackling the blood, but if you are a person that likes to matte varnish, this is the stage that I would do the last matte varnish 
because we're going to be coming in with a couple of effects and metallics in a moment. For the blood, we're going to be finishing it off by taking a light skin tone and highlighting all of the blood drops, going around picking out the edges of the trails and the bellies of the drops themselves. This can then be followed up with a green wash, which should slightly desaturate the reds while tinting the skin tone we've just applied. This is all in prelude and build up to the last layer, which is a thick application of a green blood effect all across the sculpted blood areas. Personally, I really like blood effects for tabletop stuff, and I've even used it in some dioramas and displays and things like that. However, I've noticed that the green one that I've got particularly is very translucent, which can be good in certain situations. But because of that translucency, that's why I wanted to build up this sort of underline effect through the various layers on the blood. With that done, there is another little element that we needed to tackle, which is a bugbear of mine, which was the face. And Games Workshop decided to make it that the face doesn't fit between the psychic hood and the Terminator armor. So I couldn't paint it in a sub-assembly, which is what I would normally do. So I just didn't deal with it. Basically, I slapped some skin tone on there. I slapped a wash on it and I just ignored it. The, and you can't really see it anyway, given the design of the model. So I'm not going to waste your time anymore with that when we've got some metallics that we can get to now. All of the metals got a very simple process. So things like the emblems, chest iconography and things like that got a original layer of a dark metal, either in gold or silver, followed up by a brighter layer of the same tone. So for the silver, we went for a lighter silver. For a gold, we went for a lighter gold. And both of these layers were applied. And once they dried, everything just got a black wash over all of the metallics to help bring out all of those sculpted details on the model. This means that we have to tackle the penultimate element on this model, which is all of the various etching across the armor. And to achieve this with ease, rather than going and painting in all of these items and carefully torturing myself, I'm going to cheat slightly and make up a quick white oil wash. Then I can take a thin brush using this oil mix and go in and dot the tip against the recesses of all of these areas. Through capillary action, the oil will start to flood in and fill all of these recesses, which reduces the amount of time needed to fill in and catch all of these areas, as well as de-stresses me massively because I'm not needing to paint incredibly thin lines. Now at this stage, we only really have one thing left and that is going to be the weapons. So the actual axe head of the power axe or the force axe or whatever a librarian has. And for this, we're going to need a range of metallics and I want them in different colors. So you can add inks to metallics to achieve similar effects. Or if you're like me and you have a random array of obscure hobby products that may one day be relevant and useful, you might have actual colored metallics. And I'm going to be using a selection of colored metallics that I have in order to pick out and make this effect. Starting off for the blade, we are going to need a purple metallic and we want to apply this across the entirety of the blade as a base coat. Then what we need is a dark blue and through either a process of wet blending or layering, we want to apply this color along the main edges and bevel of the blade. Once this bit is completely dry, we can then take a very pale bluish silver and apply some scratchy highlights across the very edge of the beveled section where the blade would hit any surface it's striking. This then leaves the blade sorted besides the axe head which has some ornate designs and for these we simply did the same gold setup as the other areas on our models. So a base layer of gold followed by an edge highlight and then we gave the whole blade a black wash. Once that is dry and the black wash is no longer wet, we have a model that is done. It's just a case of putting on a base that we like, painting his tactical rock to match our base, and we're good to go. Now, if you don't like the darkness that we've got from this blue and you would like something a little bit more punchy, a little bit brighter, you might be interested in checking out this video, which is where we do the exact same thing for the Ultramarines that he's going to be leading. And if you are looking for a base to go with your guys, maybe check out this Mars team base that the guys are also on. Otherwise, remember to subscribe so that we can see you next time.